Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the UEFA Nations League draw reaction with myself and Gary Spain. Um, we have the, the fixtures here and obviously the teams we play against. So we play against Bulgaria on the 3rd of the September, 3rd of the 9th. Um, we play Finland, or sorry, that Bulgaria game's away on the 3rd. Then on the 6th of the 9th, we play at home to Finland. So that's the 3rd and 6th of September. And then on the 10th of the 10th, so the 10th of October, we play Wales at home in the Aviva Stadium. Uh, on the 13th of October, 13th of the 10th, we play Finland away in Helsinki. And uh, on the 13th of the 11th, which is the 13th of November, uh, we play Wales away in Cardiff. And then on the 16th of the 11th, 16th of November, we play at home with our last game against Bulgaria. So that's the fixtures, that's the dates if you haven't already booked to, to travel. Um, do what Gary Spain did and, and stay up and book them like he did last night. Gary, um, what were your initial thoughts on the teams that we got in the draw? Yeah, I, I think it's a great draw. I'm very happy with it. Um, it's great for a number of reasons. Uh, it's great for Stephen Kenny that I think we have a really great chance of winning the group, getting promotion to League A and earning probably a World Cup playoff at a minimum. Um, it's great for the fans, some nice trips. Uh, we haven't played Finland in a competitive game since 1949. I don't think just too many. I know we played them in a friendly in 2002, but even that's a long time ago now. So it's probably a new country or a, for a lot of people. Um, so great for trips. Bulgaria was a great trip. It's 2009 since uh, we last played there. So good trip for that. It's great for the FAI. I think financially they'll be very happy to get Wales and to have Wales at home on a Saturday in Dublin. And also Finland is at home on a Sunday as well. So it should be, financially it should be attractive. We should get good gates. And uh, I think we, we dodged a bullet. Um, if you look at the, the group that came out before us, Russia, Serbia, Turkey and Hungary. Oh, that's I think Mick mentioned that as well. I think yeah. he said he'd be happy enough to avoid all those teams. Yeah, I thought it was very favourable, um, if I'm being honest. Uh, Wales are probably the only team that would you wouldn't be convinced that we could get a definite win against. I think we could beat them, but you wouldn't be going, you wouldn't be 100% confident that we could uh, could beat them. And it's only in recent years that Wales have been better than us. They haven't been better than us in a I don't think really ever. Uh, well, I don't before. even know better than us. I mean, in the World Cup qualifying, well, they passed we us four to, one. And, uh, they did, and then but now twenty eighteen was an awful year now. But in, yeah. in, in twenty seventeen, uh, we could have maybe should have beaten them in Dublin, and certainly we did beat them in Cardiff. I know it was a bit back to the wall, but mm. I wouldn't. And I mean, yeah, I, I think the key the key thing for Wales is they have Gareth Bale, who is a world class player. Yeah, and whatever about being well, we old, got them, yeah, we have, but unfortunately, Glenn may not be around in the in the autumn, yeah, yeah. and I'm kind of hoping Garrett Bale is not around in the autumn. I know the FEI are probably thinking sell a good few tickets for a Saturday in the Aviva, yeah. but uh, I'd rather have him uh, staying in Madrid, work or wherever he is playing next golf. season. Yeah, playing golf for whatever. Yeah, yeah so. in that order, as he says. Yeah. Uh, was it golf, Wales, uh, Wales, uh, golf, Madrid? I think okay. it was. Yeah, Wales is his. Well, let's just hope he gets into playing golf or something. Well, so, no, no, I wouldn't wish injury on anyone, but yeah, uh, no. he, he may. I mean, you know what I mean. Though. Yeah, he is. He's look. He's a world class player, and we don't have anyone of his ability. So. Yeah, but I think um, we, we obviously played Bulgaria, obviously, I think it was uh, Jack Burns' debut. Yeah. And, um, and there was a couple of other debuts that day. James Collins obviously got his goal as well, and Josh Cullen, wasn't it? Yeah, I yeah. think Josh played, yeah. And we that beat was his first, his first yeah, uh, we, game. We, 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 beat them, we beat them well as well, I thought, you know. Yeah, we don't know if that was their first team, because I don't know, I don't really know many of their players anymore. Like, obviously, they used to have players the likes of Martin Petrov, Stylian Petrov, Berbatov. Who are really good players, but since then, they haven't really had anyone kind of of note that makes you kind of go, oh yeah, no, no, and, and they didn't really threaten in qualifying. They they, they were hammered, they were hammered England twice group. by England. Yeah. They were they were well out of contention long before the group. Um, I mean, they were beaten by Kosovo, etc. They did beat the Czech Republic uh, in last November, but that was effectively a dead rubber with the Czechs already qualified and Bulgaria already eliminated. So yeah, I mean. I think they were one of the weaker ones. Now, they have a playoff and they have, they have home, home advantage in the playoffs. So they could, uh, they could surprise us. We'll be keeping an eye on their results. 
But uh, as of now, I think they were certainly a better bet from that section of the draw than, than let's say, a Hungary or Romania. I think Bulgaria would have been the one to get. Uh, by the way, just one thing, and I know there's a lot of confusion, and I, it's even in the papers this morning, I was reading Independent, that the game may be played behind closed doors. I can absolutely categorically say, as of now, the game is not behind closed doors. Bulgaria did have uh, a ban, and the Czech game in November was played behind closed doors. But the rest of that ban is suspended. So as of now, the game will go ahead with a full crowd. The only thing to watch is with the playoffs, they're at home to Hungary in a semi-final. I think they have a potential home final against Iceland or Romania. And if anything were to happen in Mar uh, this month in those playoffs, th that ban would come into effect, uh, presumably starting with our game in September. So it, at this stage, I'd have no concerns about booking flights and booking, maybe always, always book hotels and free cancellation, but... As of now, the game will be played with uh, an open stadium. Yeah. Um, on to Finland. Again, uh, I go back to not really knowing too many of the players that strike me. I know Pukki's playing Pukki's for Norwich. Scoring, he's scoring the goals. For, he scored the goals that brought them to the Euros. For first ever qualifying. First time they've ever qualified for anything. Yeah. Um, but still, I know they're qualified and everything like that, but I, I still don't fear them. No, and I, I wouldn't fear them. They kind them. of remind me of Iceland, in a way. Yeah, I mean, no, Iceland have been pretty good <laughs> lately. But Finland have, it, it, it's probably a golden age for them. They, they have been superb in qualifying. Probably a bit fortunate that uh, Bosnia seemed to have imploded. Um, we maybe might find out, uh, hopefully not to our cost, how good Bosnia are at the end of this month. But the, Bosnia were, were poor in this qualifying campaign. Uh, Finland, on the other hand, were excellent and they did what was expected, right? They, they, they didn't really run Italy that close, but they, they were comfortable in second place. Um, and it's been a real uh, great time for Finnish football. I know they're, they're expected to bring thousands and thousands of fans to St. Petersburg and Copenhagen. They're actually among the hardest tickets to get in the Euros are the, the Finland tickets. So they, hopefully they'll bring, bring a big crowd to Dublin in September again. But I don't fear them either. And uh, it's, it's an attractive tie. And uh, Finland away will be a nice trip for the fans. Uh, by the way, just one caveat, it may not be Helsinki. They, they tend to play most of their qualifiers in Tampere or in Turku. Now, there is a new stadium being opened in Helsinki in August, so there's a very good chance that we'll be playing there in October. But maybe bear that in mind if booking flights or anything that allow Tampere is a couple of hours away, so don't try and arrive in in the afternoon of the match. As of now, anyway, it could be elsewhere in Finland. Yeah. Do you think, um, obviously, Nick McCart is not going to be in charge. Stephen Kenny is going to be leading the way. Now this is going to be, his, his opening game is going to be in Bulgaria. Are you excited for his, I suppose, reign? Yeah, I, I am. I, I'm excited for his reign. and I'm excited for a lot of young talent that's coming through. I mean, it, it definitely, we, we've been talking about possible players for the playoffs. Uh, definitely the likes of Josh Cullen. Jason Knight, Jason, Jim Malumbili, um, Troy Parrott, um, Aaron Connolly is already an established member of the squad. Um, Obafemi. Michael Obafemi, well, he's probably already, I mean, he could well play in the playoffs as well. Should be. But he should be. Will Smallburn, Smallbone, sorry, coming through. Uh, yeah, so we, we will have probably a very different side that will face Bulgaria, then hopefully will face Poland. On the 15th of June, I'm still hope, banking on us playing Poland in the Aviva. But uh, anyway. You, someone, someone put up a comment yesterday on the live stream I did, and they said, and I thought it was an interesting question, will, will Stephen Kenny stick with the old guard or will he have a whole new implemented team? Because when you say old guard, because you think of like Howard Hill and Hendrick, and they're just off the top of my head. They're not that, like they're 27, 28, they're not. Yeah, oh. no, I don't think he's going to discard people like that. But I think we will have quite a new, uh, a few Tran fresh transition. faces. Um, he may see the Nations League as a, as a transition, as an experiment with a focus on World Cup qualifying. Having said that, if we could win that Nations League group, I'm pretty sure it would give us 
and I can talk a little bit about that, but it would give us a, a great chance of, of a World Cup playoff. Um, yeah, just, just to explain on that, so the, the way World Cup qualifying works is there's going to be 10 groups of either five or six teams. Top 10 qualified, the next 10 get a playoff. It's going to be very difficult to get into the, the top two. The next two playoff places are reserved for winners of Nations League groups. Now, that starts in League A. I would imagine the four League A group winners will also qualify for the World Cup or at least down a playoff. They're going to more than likely finish in the top two of their groups. So then it comes down to League B. And the two best League B playoff winners, and I think if you even win the playoff, there's a good chance that one or two of the other playoff winners will have earned at least a playoff, if not have won their group, or um, that with a group like Wales, Bulgaria and Finland, we would have a good chance if we do win the group that we'd be one of the best group winners as well. I mean, you look at Turkey, Serbia and Russia and Hungary all in the same group. I can't see the winners of that group having too many points either. It's going to be a really tough group. So, yeah, I mean, it, we may see the Nations League as a bit of a transition, but it would be fantastic to win the group. It would keep probably keep our World Cup qualification hopes alive, at least until the playoffs. Yeah, a lot of people have been, been talking... Um, negatively towards about Stephen Kenny, you know, about when he's had big jobs previously and stuff like that, he's failed to. I think this time around, I think patience is, is needed, and if it is a transitional pe period, you can't be expecting instant success. There's a lot of people out there, oh, you know, we want to see us get the ball down, play this type of thing. Our teams aren't really known for doing that. Obviously, from Stephen Kenny's under 21 team downwards, or if you want to go upwards, whatever way you want to look at it, they're all playing that similar type of football. But if it's a player playing in Burnley's first team and they just play hoofball. They're not used to playing this on the ground type of football. So it might be a case of they're going to take a while to get used to. Stephen Kenny's only going to have a couple of days to work with his players to go through his type of tactics like he does with the under-21s. And they play brilliant football. Again, I just got to go back. To, I'm not criticising Stephen Kenny here because I'm really excited for, for him to take over. Obviously, I want to make us, Nick to get us to the Euros um, and Stephen to come in then after that. But there's so many people that are so negative towards Kenny because of his time with their Dunfermline, and Shamrock Grovers, these teams that they think that he has the big job, he can't do it. But he still got Dunfermline to a cup final, am I right? He, he got Dunfermline to a cup final and uh, well, we're, they're now in the, the second tier and not even challenging for promotion. Although Jonathan Falabi scored for them last weekend. So. First senior goal, yeah. shout out Johnny. Yeah. Well done. Um, I, I, he won the double here with Bose as well, and uh, so they would say they're just as big as Shamrock Rovers, I'm sure. Um, and, I, and I would argue he didn't get a chance at Shamrock Rovers. I think they, they should have stuck with him for a bit longer. Um, they're certainly given Stephen Bradley uh, a much better chance. Maybe they've learned from that, and yeah. well, look at the job he's doing now. I mean, look, fantastic. I mean, arguably the best team in the league at the moment. I, I don't agree, actually, that our players whether they're at Burnley or whatever, playing hoof ball, can't pass the ball. Uh, we're well able to pass the ball. I mean, and look at the way the under-21s are playing at the moment. Um, and if you're not going to Bratislava, you could do a lot worse than go to Tala and watch the under-21s against Iceland. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be a transition. If we do qualify, as you say, he will have very little chance to work with the players. If we don't qualify, I suppose to Stephen's advantage, he will have that training camp in Austria and the friendly in Limerick against Luxembourg, um, which will give him a bit more time. I, I suspect either way, he probably will see the Nations League as a bit of a transition. So maybe I'm being a bit too optimistic in talking about winning the group. Yeah, well, I think, I, th I think again, players are going to have to get used to, to the way he plays, his playing style, he's very intense um, playing style, press from the front, um, and I like it. I think it's the way that we should be, it, it should be the, the template in which all the underage teams are, are playing like that right now. Jason Donahue has them nailed yeah. from an early age with this intensity, press from the front, and if you haven't seen that video I did with the under-15s, it shows what they're teaching them off in an, under, uh, an early age. I'll put it at the end of this video so you can watch it. Um, but it's just, he he has it drilled in and all the managers have a meeting once a month from the under-15s to the national team, Mick McCarthy. 
um, and they all have a meeting once a month and go through all the players that are doing well and stuff like that. Um, so everybody knows what's going on there. I mean, what I'm saying about the, the Burnley thing, and Burnley was just a team I, I put out there. I wasn't actually thinking of them. It was just the first thing that came to my mind. It's not that. It's just you're playing in a system where it is that hoof ball. It's hard to adjust them to a ball playing thing, and that's all I'm saying. Um, players will, will be well capable, but when you're used to playing a system for so long, it's hard to just go and just change that. Yeah, but, it, but if you look at the way then he played, I mean, Dundalk, before he took over Dundalk, they weren't, uh, they weren't great to watch, I think, frankly. He took some, quite a few of the players were still there and he, he transformed the way they played very quickly. Yeah, but and, he was able to work them every day or every training session and he had them a lot. What I'm saying is he works for Ireland, he's going to have, they play two games in three days, I'm pretty sure I read there. So yeah. he's not going to have a lot of time to actually be on the training pitch with them as well, I'm saying. So I just think people need to be a bit more, okay. more patient, all I'm saying. I'm not saying that uh, he's, he's not able to coach because he obviously is. What I'm saying is he's, he's, he's going to need time to implement his philosophy on the team. But again, he doesn't get that much time at international level, at international football, because the time is so short. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think... As soon as the last game's played, they're back out to their clubs. Yeah, and, and this may be why, come back to an argument, will he promote a lot of his under-21s who are playing so well? Mm, that's the, It's a good argument, yeah. like, do you know what I mean? And, and that's why, again, if, 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 God forbid, we don't get to... Uh, the Euros, and I don't really want to be saying it because I, I do remain optimistic that we will win both playoff games. Um, once we get past Slovakia, of course, not looking past them. But if he does have that um, camp to work with them, that would be huge. I think because people will know then what kind of what way he's he's kind of setting up for then. You know, um, whether it's if they're just meeting up for the first time in uh, September. To, if that would probably be the first time he meets the squad properly if he's not in charge for the Austrian. Well, that's right. If we do qualify for the Euros, obviously Mick will still be in charge and Stephen will only have a couple of days before an away trip to that's Bulgaria. What I mean. yeah. Which will be, yeah, that so will be You can't just difficult. expect us to just magically be playing yeah. tiki taka type football. That's all I'm saying. Um, it's going to be so. transitional period, but look, look how many good players are coming through. There's Conor Ronan there as well, um, which is one of the players that we didn't get to mention, but so many good young... Uh, Leo Connor at Celtic, you know, yeah. Just, so many good yeah. young players coming through there that um, St Stephen Kenny coming through, I think it's an exciting time to add to what we have already, because there is some really good players in there, Matt Doherty and so on. It's probably, other than Alexander Arnold, probably the best fullback in Europe at the minute. Yeah, he's he, Matt's absolutely flying at the moment, you know. Yeah. Just please stay fit for... Yeah, because James Collins, though. Anyway, let us know your thoughts on the draw in the comments and um, anything else that we spoke about. Give us your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like if you're new. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like our live videos, let us know in the comments and we'll try to do maybe a live once or twice a week, uh, live at five. Speak to you soon. Thanks for watching. All the best. I hope that stayed on. Uh, it did. Good stuff. 19.